Hello, I am Marie Contreras. For the last 20 years, I have been a vintage and antique collectibles reseller on eBay. For the last five years, I have run my own pet care business. I write a weekly blog about pet care, and I recently wrote my first book about caring for dogs. I make videos on this channel about growing a small business, saving money, and living life on your own terms. If this sounds like something you would enjoy, stick around. I hope you enjoy what I created for you. Hello, today I want to share some tips on how to save on Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is just around the corner and I know that many of my female friends enjoy the holiday. They look forward to it. They like chocolates, they like wine, they like being pampered. But my male friends, most of them dread it. And they dread it because it puts a lot of pressure on them to say and do things that they may or may not be ready to say, or maybe they are ready to say, but they just don't like being told what to do. The holiday is expensive. They are, there's a lot of pressure on them and a lot of expectations, they think. It doesn't have to be that way. So in this video, I'm gonna share some great creative tips that will help you show that you care about somebody without breaking your budget. So let's get right to it. First and most importantly, you have to know, you have to know quite a bit about a person in order to be a good gift giver. So the first thing that you have to do, there is some homework required, is you have to watch and listen and learn about the person that you're with. Of course, that's fun. It goes without saying, you have to know the person. You have to know what they like, what they don't like, what their, what their dreams are, what their goals are. All of these things help you to be a, a better gift giver. Once you've got that under control, the rest is pretty easy. Now, I'm going to refer to a book that I read a long time ago that, that is called The Five Love Languages. I will link it down in the description. It's a good book to have as a starting point. The Five Love Languages are basically the five different ways that the author believes that we express and receive love and affection. It can be friendship as well. It doesn't have to be a, a man-woman relationship type of thing. It's just how we show other people that we care. And the first of the love languages is gifts. Now, some people love to receive gifts. Most people enjoy it. Most people don't dislike it. But some people like that more than others. For the person who likes gifts, of course, the classic Valentine's gift is flowers. Guys can really overspend here or, or girls on Valentine's Day. The prices are jacked up. They're way too expensive, and by the time you add delivery fees, you're looking at you know $100, $200 to send somebody a, a bouquet of roses, to a dozen or two dozen. At best, they're gonna last a week, maybe two, usually not two, usually one week. I just don't think that's a real good investment for, for the amount of money that you spend. You work hard for your money. I want you to get more out of it. Now, that doesn't mean I hate flowers, because I don't. I love flowers. I'll be buying myself some flowers at Trader Joe's here pro within the next day or two. If you're thinking flowers, go to your grocery store. Go to Walmart, Target. If you have a Trader Joe's, they have wonderful fresh flowers. Aldi's sometimes has flowers. Another thing that you can do if the person is the type of person who enjoys gifts, you don't need expensive jewelry. Think about something that they've been wishing for. And if you don't know, check out their Pinterest board. Most girls have a Pinterest board and we put all of our, we, we plan things. Like if we like picnics, we'll have a whole board for picnics. If we like high or travel will have boards on Pinterest for that. Take a look at her Pinterest board and see what she's dreaming about. That'll give you some really good ideas on what types of gifts to get her. Another place that you can take a sneak peek about what she's dreaming about, if she has one, is an Amazon wish list. Now, I don't keep mine up to date, but a lot of people do. They'll they'll shop for things and they'll put them in their wish list and they'll hope and, and save. That's another place that you can check for things that she's hoping for. But you know, a small meaningful gift goes a lot farther than an expensive gift that maybe she doesn't even like. Look at the way she dresses and the way that she puts things together. If she wears big, bold statement jewelry, you know, big dangly earrings or big necklaces, you know, look at the way that she dresses. If she, if she likes to wear one of a kind statement pieces for jewelry, and you buy her something that's com the complete opposite, she's probably not gonna like it. And vice versa, if she wears tiny little dainty things and you buy her a big bold statement piece because you like it, she it's probably not her style. So, you know, kind of pay attention to how she dresses herself if you're gonna buy her something that she's gonna wear because most women are very particular about how they dress. Just use a little caution there. It's really not about the, the money that you spend, but the thought that goes into it. Now, the, the next type, gifts that you can do are acts of service. 
These are generally very low cost. For the type of person who likes acts of service, the way that you can tell what somebody likes is what do they do for you? When they're trying to show that they care about you or show affection for you, are they doing things for you? Are they buying things for you? Are they showing you with back rubs? Are they showing you with kisses? There are, these are all different types of love languages in that book. And reading that book kind of gives you an idea on it. But in the book, there's basically five different languages that they talk about. One is gifts. The second one is acts of service. There's physical touch, there's quality time, and the last one is uh, words of affirmation. We've covered gifts. We're gonna go over acts of service next. This one is great if, if you're married or you're living together and she's got a honeydew list. Do the honeydew list for Valentine's Day. There is nothing cooler than watching a guy listen to you and take care of the things that you need done. If you can't do the honeydew list because you don't have the skills, you know, getting a plumber to fix the leaky faucet, you know, and then, to, you know, spending some time with her. Those are, those are gifts that are kind of creative and you wouldn't think they're romantic and they won't be for a lot of people. But for the person who enjoys acts of service, they will be. Another one for the person who enjoys having you do things for them is if they're always cooking the meals and they're always taking care of the house, if you cook them a nice meal that day and, and you clean it up, you know, there's nothing worse than than someone who says, oh, I'm gonna cook you this fabulous meal. My dad was a chef. He very rarely cooked at home. We pr actually preferred mom's cooking anyway. She cooked more kid-friendly meals. On his days off or special holidays, he would make a big deal about how he was going to treat us and he was gonna cook dinner for us. Well, he would cook a, a nice dinner. It wasn't our favorite because we liked mom's cooking better. But this man who was an executive chef at a fancy restaurant made the biggest mess you'd ever seen. And because he made such a big mess, and he was so proud of his cooking and people paid so much to go to his restaurant. He said, okay, well, I did the cooking. Now you guys do the cleanup. Mom cleaned as she went. We may have had to do the dishes after our mom was done cooking too, but there was all, all we had left with mom was the dishes we ate on and, the, and maybe, a, maybe a pot. That woman was clean. She was tidy. She would always have a sink full of dishes going while she was cooking. And as she was using things and processing them, she was cleaning them. So really the only thing that hadn't been cleaned when we did the dishes with mom were our plates and forks and serving dishes. It was easy. But my dad, there'd be dough on the ceiling. There'd be flour everywhere. There'd be grease everywhere. That guy had people that worked in the kitchen that's only job was to follow him around and clean up behind him. And when he got home, he thought that was us. So don't be that person. Don't come in and make a big deal about this wonderful meal that you made and leave a huge mess for her if you're cooking in her, in her, in her home. If you're cooking in your own home, the mess is yours. And, and if she enjoys acts of service, she may volunteer to help you clean up. But the more that you can do and the less you involve her, the, the sweeter the gift. So I got off on a tangent, a little bit of a, a bad memory for kitchen cleanup there for me. But if you don't know how to cook, that's okay. I think everybody should know how to cook one, one thing at least really well. And grilling counts. So if you are a grill master or if you know how to cook a great steak and she likes to eat steak, cook that. It doesn't have to be fancy. It can be a baked potato and steak and salad, and it doesn't get any easier than that. But if you cook that steak perfectly, you're still going to win the, win the points. And if you don't know how to cook, learn, go to YouTube, find out what your one meal is and, and find a simple version of it. Another thing that you can do is you can plan a picnic if, if you have nice weather. And I know that I live in LA, it's going to be 80 degrees today. It's perfect picnic weather. We shine in the winter. Our winters are beautiful. Maybe you don't have that, maybe you have snow. If you have snow or ice on the ground, it's not picnic season for you. But if you're in the southern portions of the United States or other places that are warmer this time of year, picnics are very can be very romantic. You don't have to cook on a picnic. What I do on picnics very often is I will go to the deli section where they have like prepared pre-packaged foods like the the rotisserie chickens and the fried chicken and the potato wedges and the various salads that they have in your deli section at your grocery store. And you can pick those things up in the little containers already so you don't even need to have containers for it. 
You can pack all of that in a cooler or a backpack and pack a couple nice dishes and a couple nice glasses. Grab a blanket from the house and a tarp to go under it in case the ground may be damp. You can have a beautiful picnic. Grab a couple throw pillows. You've got this nice romantic mood and this, this, this feast. A lot of people don't do picnics anymore and I am a picnic fan. I have a whole board on my Pinterest that has nothing but picnics on it. So picnics are another great way. You know, just as a, a mention on restaurants, restaurants on Valentine's Day are, I've been, to, I've been to my share of really lovely restaurants on Valentine's Day. Like I said, my dad was a chef, he was in the restaurant business. And I've had, I've been fortunate enough to have many nice dates on Valentine's Day. Restaurants are my least favorite. One, because usually the guy who's invited me, he had to get reservations. He may have called three or four different places because they book up early. When we get there, even if it's one of the nicest places in town, even with a reservation, there's often a wait. If there isn't a wait, if you're five minutes late, you lose your reservation. I've noticed with reservations, if people are lingering a little bit longer, as they often do on Valentine's Day, your reservation time, you're still gonna wait 20, 30, 12, 60 minutes for your reservation because you're waiting for the table to clear. The staff, is doing their best, but they're frazzled because the place is booked to capacity and maybe they're not always booked to capacity. It's just not the most re relaxed or romantic atmosphere in most cases. A lot of restaurants will have special menus on Valentine's Day. They'll have the special, you know, Valentine's Day meal, which is always more expensive. So if you wanna pay a lot of money for an experience that is going to underwhelm you, by all means, go to a fancy restaurant. But I think you're gonna do a lot better if you do a home-cooked meal. You're gonna save a ton of money. You're gonna have no wait times. It, it takes more effort to cook a meal, but it really doesn't. Because if you're gonna spend 100 to $200 on, on a Valentine's Day meal, that can go a long way at the grocery store. And you can have a really lovely meal and you can go for a walk afterwards. You can have a nice bottle of wine. I mean, you your money just goes so much farther if you skip the restaurants and the fancy flowers. Let's say if the person likes physical touch, this doesn't have to be sex. Um, it can be if you're there in the relationship, but I'm not gonna talk about that. What I'm talking about is the person, you can hold their hand. It can be as simple as that. You can offer a, a massage. You could buy them a massage. You can just make sure that you're sitting close to the person and you know, brush their arm. That type of thing goes a long way for the person who enjoys that the most. And you'll know if the person that you're with is that type of person because they will they will be wanting to, to do that for you. That's the third one is physical touch. The Another one is words of affirmation. Now for the person who likes words of affirmation, this is compliments. This is the person who wants to hear the words about how you feel about them. This can also be something as fun for the women receiving it, maybe for the men writing it, old fashioned love letters. I mean, you can't spend less than that and have something more meaningful. So if you can write a beautiful love letter, maybe you're not comfortable writing a beautiful love letter, get a card, write a handwritten note in the card. Another thing that you can do in this department of, of gift is you could make a, a special video that tells the person why they're special to you and how much they mean to you. I'm not talking about those other types of videos that you men like to send. This is, is this is when you can you can be creative and it doesn't have to cost you a lot of money, but you could do a Valentine's Day production video for them and you can go to Canva and you can get graphics to, to spice it up. You can have a lot of fun with stuff like this. The next one, for the person who wants to spend quality time with you. This is the person who is inviting you to hang out all the time. This is somebody who wants to spend quality time. If you're the first person they call when they've got something fun to do, that's this is their category. So the person who wants to do quality time, it doesn't have to be, like I said, it doesn't have to be a fancy restaurant or, or anything like that. It can be something as simple as, it can be something as simple as taking a walk in a beautiful place, a safe place you know, because a lot of times Valentine's Day, especially during the week, is celebrated at night. I'm close to the beach. A walk on the beach is lovely. A drive, a scenic drive, if it's too cold. You know, I live in a place where we can drive through the canyons and we can overlook the city and it's just gorgeous at night. And I love going on drives. I used to have a boyfriend who had a fun little sports car and we he would say come on let's go for a drive and we would start out in the desert where we lived and we would drive th through the desert through the canyons through the mountains to where we could overlook LA 
and we would stop for a minute and talk and just watch the city lights because both of us enjoyed that. And then a lot of times we would turn around and go home or sometimes we would continue on and we would drive down to the coast and we'd drive up the coast for a while. And it was not unusual for us to just spend two or three hours just driving and we loved it. He enjoyed driving. I enjoyed sitting in the passenger seat and enjoying the, the sights and sounds. And, you know, a lot of times we would have some wonderful conversations while we were on these drives. And that's the cost of gas, which these days is a lot more than it used to be. It's still relatively inexpensive. So a, a lovely drive is, is, a, a, is a fun thing to do. Walks are great. Well, a fun thing that you can do if you're going to be going on a, a walk or a drive is pack an old fashioned thermos full of hot chocolate. Grab a Ziploc baggie full of little mini marshmallows and, you know, pull it out when you're halfway through the drive or when you're when you're stopped to enjoy it, a beautiful view and just enjoy some hot cocoa. That, that makes it a little extra special and it doesn't cost you hardly anything. Another thing that you can do when you're when you're out, you know, you could go bowling, you can go ice skating, you can go roller skating, you could go drive bumper cars. A fun thing that I did once we used to have a race car track. It's called Malibu Grand Prix when I was in high school. And I remember my high school boyfriend at the time would take me to Malibu Grand Prix and we'd race each other in these little race cars and we'd check our times. And it was just so much fun. You know, think outside the box a little bit, ask your friends what they're doing for fun and maybe try something new. If there's something that she's mentioned that, that's new in town that she said, hey, wouldn't it be fun to do this? Kind of keep a mental note of those types of things. And, you know, pull, pulling them out on Valentine's Day just shows that you listen. Another fun thing that you can do for when you get home from your outings is with a little bit of pre-planning, you can grab a bottle of wine or her favorite drink, alcoholic, non-alcoholic, doesn't matter, and have that chilled and ready to go when for when you get home. And you can also prepare like... You can have some appetizers that are ready to pop in the oven or a cheese plate that you've already got cut up and wrapped in plastic. So when you get home, you can continue enjoying each other's company, but it shows a little extra thought and a little extra care. Doesn't cost much at all. So what do you think? Did I share anything that could save you some money? Just have fun. You don't have to spend a ton of money. If you're, what if you're single? I'm single this year and I, and I don't feel sorry for myself. I'm not sad. I'm single by choice and I'm very happy. What I'm gonna be doing this year is I am going to, I'm gonna pick up some flowers for myself because I like flowers. I'm gonna buy myself a new candle because I love the way a new candle smells. I'm gonna make myself a little bit of a nice mood in here. I'm gonna curl up with my pets and read a good book. Something that I, that I did a few years ago when I was also single was I invited all of my single friends over the weekend before Valentine's Day and we had a singles mixer party and I decorated the house up, there were roses everywhere. We had chocolate martinis. I had lots of little appetizers and we had a really nice evening. We played music, turned off the TV. No love matches were made, but it was all my friends and we had a good time. And I even had a couple, few couples mixed in that promised they wouldn't rub their relationship in our noses, all of us single people. But that's something fun you can do too. If you're single and you don't wanna be alone, have a party. Invite your other single friends. Tell them to bring their single friends and just enjoy the day. It's a day to show that we appreciate each other and that we care about each other. And that includes caring about yourself. I hope you have a happy Valentine's Day. Bye till next time. If you enjoyed this video, nudge the like button. If you would like to see more like this, consider subscribing. If you would like to read the blog or check out my new book, I'm going to leave links to them in the description. Thank you for watching. Bye till next time.